category that I'm in. Um, oops, click got it. Um, and then the second part, we'll talk about uh, how I got to my role, the skills and qualifications needed, um, the rewards, challenges, and other insights I have about the industry. So we can go ahead and get started. Okay, cool. So when you typically think of somebody who works in the tech industry, you probably think of like a software engineer or a data scientist. Um, if you've ever seen TV shows like Silicon Valley, then you also know that the media tends to portray tech mostly as these people who are also like software engineers. Um, you've probably also heard from someone in your life how you should probably do a coding bootcamp or learn how to code if you want to break into the tech industry and work at a tech company. Now, I think learning how to code is really great. It's awesome. If that's something you want to do, definitely go for it. Um, but in case learning how to code isn't, you know, in the cards for your future, don't worry. I don't think it's necessarily the right move for me either. Um, I'm here to tell you about another job function that's extremely common and very essential at a tech company, specifically large companies like Meta, Twitter, Snap, TikTok, et cetera. And these are marketing and advertising roles at these tech companies. So when uh, I want to give you some insight into the type of role I currently have at Twitter in the advertising function. Um, and in case any of you are unfamiliar with Twitter, uh, Twitter is a social media platform where users can communicate and stay connected with each other through the exchange of quick messages known as tweets. So you might have heard the term tweet before, that's us. Um, we are also known as the platform that's known for when conversation starts and happens, um, such as when topics, events, or news articles are trending. Now at large tech companies like Twitter, um, companies are often broken up into different orgs, orgs meaning organizations. So my role falls under the sales and advertising org. Um, I work in global performance advertising, now, what is global performance advertising? Um, my team works with Fortune 500 clients so that they can achieve their marketing goals um, through advertising on Twitter's platform. So my team is a really big essential contributor to how companies like Twitter can make money, revenue overall, because revenue from advertising is super important uh, to the company. Now, performance advertising is part of the field of paid social media. Now, you might be wondering what is paid social media? Um, paid social media is a method of displaying advertisements or sponsored marketing messages on po popular social media platforms that target a specific sub audience. Now, just a disclaimer that this is not my definition. I pulled this from the internet and I cited HubSpot. Um, but basically, you guys have definitely seen paid social ads before, even if you're not familiar with the term. So um, you've probably seen a paid social ad, whether you're scrolling on TikTok or watching an ad before a YouTube video. So here are some examples of paid social ads. Um, they usually have a marker on them that says paid by, promoted, sponsored. So the one on the left here um, is an example of a paid social ad you can see on Twitter. Um, under the M&M's handle, you can see it says promoted. I know it's really small text, but this is how you know it's a paid social ad. Um, the one on the right it is, is an example of an ad on Instagram. Again, you can see here that it says sponsored. So these are just types of ads um, that you might've come across as you scroll across the different social media apps that you use. So now to understand the purpose of paid social ads, paid social advertising, and what it can achieve, I'm going to explain super high level, two types of advertising. That's going to be really helpful for you to know if you wanna go into this industry. So, the first type of advertising I'm going to talk about, you can call this brand advertising. So this is advertising that focuses on mass reach and awareness. You're essentially trying to capture the attention of as many people as possible by advertising something new or unknown. So something like a new movie, TV show, a new phone, car, product, etc. So for example, um, if you recall when the new Spider-Man movie came out a few months ago, you probably saw ads for that promoting the film across every single social media platform on your TikTok, on your Snapchat, Facebook, et cetera. Um, so this is brand advertising. Um, it's awareness marketing. Um, we also refer to this as upper funnel marketing. So if you look to the image on the right, you can see this image is shaped like a funnel. Um, at the top of the funnel is awareness. And you can see that this has the widest circumference. 
So again, this just signifies how you're trying to reach as many people as possible to spread the word about this product that you're advertising. Now, for the second type of advertising, we're going to talk about performance advertising. So this is separate from brand. Um, with performance advertising, this is advertising that focuses on engaging with a person after you've captured their attention. Your ultimate goal is to get this person to convert. Convert here meaning to make a purchase, sign up for something, to visit a website, et cetera. So going back to that Spider-Man example, um, let's pretend that the Spider-Man movie is now available on a streaming service. So this streaming service, let's just say like Netflix, they're trying to increase the number of subscriptions. So what they'll do is that they'll target people through paid social ads. They'll target people interested in the streaming service, interested in the Spider-Man movie um, with the goal of driving users, driving people to the streaming services website and ultimately sign up for an account. So for performance advertising, this is also known as mid funnel and lower funnel marketing. Um, you are moving users from the awareness phase um, to the consideration phase. So this second part right here, the consideration phase is what we call mid funnel because it's sort of like the middle point between this path. Um, and then you wanna move them from the consideration to the conversion phase, uh, which is known as lower funnel. So this would be um, if users sign up for a streaming service account. So conversion is like what the ultimate goal of this would be. And um, the two parts here make up performance advertising. And also all together, these three different parts, this is what we call full funnel marketing, um, since the funnel is now complete with these three different phases. So in my job at Twitter, um, I work in performance advertising. So we focus on the bottom two phases, consideration and conversion. There's a whole different team at Twitter that focuses on brand advertising. So things like mass reach and awareness. So now that you have an understanding of the type of advertising my specific role falls under, um, I'll explain the other parts of my role. So as a performance advertising specialist, um, essentially we are expected to have a really solid foundation of paid social knowledge. So we are the experts that companies can go to when they want to try to understand the Twitter algorithm as it relates to advertising best practices. Now, what do I mean best by best practice? Um, by best practice, what I mean is that these are sort of like the rules that advertisers should follow when they want to set up and run their campaigns to advertise on Twitter and hit their marketing goals. Um, the second part of my role, we collaborate extremely frequently in our day to days with working with the sales teams. So the sales teams are the ones who are in charge of client relationships. Um, clients are the companies that advertise on Twitter. So sales teams are the ones who pitch opportunities to these companies to advertise on Twitter. So the sales teams are the ones who understand the client marketing goals and KPIs. KPI here means key performance indicator. And this is a term that you'll always hear in the marketing and advertising industry. So I guess it would be helpful for you guys to know it now. Um, but KPI is the main metric that a company decides will determine success for their advertising or marketing campaigns. Um, another one of the core functions of my team is to have this notion of adopting a test and learn mindset. So what this means is that we analyze large sets of data to uncover what types of people, so what types of audiences and creatives, what types of ads will resonate best with people on the Twitter platform for a client's campaign. So it's all about like uncovering data and analyze, uh, uncovering insights um, when you analyze data. And along with this notion of adopting a test and learn mindset, um, the last integral part of my role is to really champion the idea of experimentation. So we frequently collaborate with people on the product engineering and data science teams um, on new product features that are being tested out on Twitter, since there's always going to be improvements to the algorithm. So conducting experiments is super important um, when there are improvements to the different types of advertising functions that the engineering and data teams make at Twitter. So this is sort of my role, simplified in a nutshell, um, but hopefully gives you guys a sense of like, if you are interested in these careers, like what the different types of things you can do um, in a role like this. So that was an overview 
of the role and the paid social industry. Now we're going to shift gears into the second part of the presentation where I want to share my background in this industry and how I actually pivoted into tech from the media industry. Um, you'll notice that there are actually a lot of commonalities that you'll be able to hear about and sort of hopefully see like how I was able to shape my path to work in tech. Um, but essentially, in college, I did lots of internships in the media and entertainment industry. Um, this is because at the time in high school and college, my initial dream was to work in a marketing role in the entertainment industry. So I hustled really hard and junior year of college that summer, um, I was a digital marketing intern at Universal Pictures. Universal Pictures is a movie studio. So as an intern, um, I supported various different digital marketing campaigns, such as supporting social media ads, doing influencer marketing, et cetera, for lots of different feature films, such as Jurassic World, Despicable Me, and more. Um, this, in this internship, I focused a lot on pitching and, and thinking of digital marketing campaigns, analyzing what types of creatives I thought would work best for different platforms. So like what type of uh, movie creative would work best on Facebook versus Snapchat, et cetera. And this internship was also really instrumental for me in getting experience with advertising and marketing across all the different social media channels, um, specifically for movie marketing. So with that background, after I graduated, I was applying to lots of different jobs and I found this social media job open at BuzzFeed. For those of you who are unfamiliar with BuzzFeed, um, BuzzFeed is basically a media company that's known for lots of different brands like BuzzFeed Video, um, Tasty, Good Advice Cupcake. These are some of the ones you might know if you're familiar with the company. Um, but then within the media industry, um, BuzzFeed is also known as a company that's really good at understanding the power of data and how the power of data can drive content creation and strategy. So because of that, I knew that working at BuzzFeed would be a really awesome opportunity for me to better understand how content could thrive and also differ between the different social media platforms. So I applied and I got the job as a social media strategist. So my first year at BuzzFeed, um, this year was spent developing social media strategy across the different social media platforms. So across Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest. So I did that for about a year and I was on the social media team for that. And then after about a year, I got a little tired of just doing social media strategy. And I want to learn about the other side of the industry, which the other side would be paid social media. So I was able to switch teams at Buzzy, which is really great. And I joined the paid social media team where I was there for two years. And in this role, it's very similar to sort of what I do at Twitter right now. Um, so I work with clients to help them execute their paid social campaigns across uh, different social channels. So after I was at BuzzFeed for almost about three years, um, I want to try a new opportunity at a new company. Um, since BuzzFeed was the first place I was working at after college, I figured, okay, I want to try something new. Um, and after building up lots of experience, uh, experience in becoming an expert across both organic and paid social media strategy, but also across different social media platforms, my next goal was to actually work at a platform itself. Um, I'd always kind of wanted to work in tech and I thought because I have all this knowledge about you know, what works on different tech companies, it'd be really great if I could work at the platform itself. So that's how I ended up at Twitter. Um, a lot of this experience was super translatable because I had experience doing Twitter advertising and also had um, demonstrated knowledge of analyzing data and analyzing creatives to see what works best um, on social media. So. This is how I was able to pivot. And I would definitely say that my background in the entertainment and media industry definitely allowed me to excel and get this job at Twitter, um, the tech company I work at now. So now I want to talk about the qualifications and skills needed to work in advertising and marketing. Um, this is not necessarily specific to roles at tech companies. I would say that what I've listed here um, is pretty common. They're pretty common skills needed to enter the marketing industry in general, um, including at a tech company. So some of the most common majors to study in college things are things like communication, psychology, marketing, business, and economics. Personally, I studied communications, marketing, psychology in college. Um, here are just some example courses that I took. These courses really just did a deep dive into the world of media and how media works in today's society. Now, with this said, I know I've listed about like five different majors here, 
But I will say that the marketing and tech industry is pretty open to accepting diverse majors compared to other industries. So for instance, I think like if you want to work in finance, you, you kind of have to like major in finance or economics. Um, whereas in marketing and in tech, you know, I think a lot of different majors can give you that can be translated to working in this industry. Um, however, the five majors I've listed here are probably like the majors that will give you the most solid foundation of knowledge to break into this industry. The next way to build up your qualifications um, is to join and participate in student groups during high school and college. I would say this is also really important because before you're able to secure internships, likely this will be in college, student group activities are going to be probably the main way you have um, to build experience on your resume. So what this means is to really participate in your student group and maybe find like the student group's marketing committee, try out being a graphic designer for them, run the social media channels for the student group. These are all really great ways for you to build up experience, uh, I can't say experience, for you to build up experience before you're trying to apply to internships and eventually uh, entry level jobs after college. Now, as for tools, softwares, programs you should learn, the first half I'm going to mention focus on data analysis. So as I mentioned in the beginning, while you don't need to learn how to code in order to get a job like mine and work in tech, um, one of the biggest skills you should know though is you should be able to understand how to analyze data. So what this means is you should learn how to use Excel or Google Sheets. Um, these are all instrumental ways for you to learn how to analyze data, be able to use programs like this because data is pretty much in a lot of the work you'll be doing in marketing and advertising. Um, and then the second half of the tools and programs that you should learn, these are sort of more focused on creativity. So you wanna make sure that while you know you, you, you wanna make sure while you know how to analyze data, you also wanna make sure you know how to communicate that data, right? So what this means is you should know how to use software is like PowerPoint, Keynote, Photoshop, if you really want to make some awesome presentations. So I would say these are some of the main programs you should definitely learn how to use. I'm going to admit this person, okay. Um, and then lastly, the last point I'm making here, online certificates to complete. This is something that's definitely less important to you guys right now as high schoolers. So don't really focus too much on this, but I still wanted to include this because it's something that's going to be very useful for when you start your careers or even your internships. So what I mean by online certificates to complete, there are lots of free certification courses offered by tech companies like Facebook, Twitter. I think YouTube also has something like this. These courses um, are free and they teach you foundational advertising concepts as it relates to the respective platform. So by completing these free online certification programs, this can be really beneficial when applying to internships and entry-level jobs in the future so that you're able to show, show the certificate on your resume. What this basically means is, hey, if I completed this Facebook certificate on my resume, it shows I know how to do Facebook advertising. So um, companies will see that on your resume and be like, oh, okay, this girl has the experience needed um, to, you know, to do the job of this entry-level role. So on the right, this is an example of the Facebook Certified Digital Marketing Associate Program. Again, it's free. So this is something to like sort of like keep in your back pocket in a few years um, to be able to, once again, build up experience for whatever role you want to go into. And then lastly, I just want to end by talking about sort of like the rewards and challenges of the industry. Um, social media is only going to continue to make up a larger part of marketing and advertising budgets in the years to come, especially as brands and companies want to capture the attention of Gen Z, you guys, more and more, and Gen Z is mostly on mobile and social media apps. So what this means is if you want to become a professional who works in this field, you really need to know how to keep up with digital trends, understand how social media platforms differ from each other. So you want to ask yourself, you know, what are the main differences between Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram, and how do you as a user, how do you engage with each platform differently? This is really important to understand at a deep level because platform insights like this will drive how you want to advertise on the different platforms. And along with that, 
there are always dynamic changes happening in this industry, especially as it relates to marketing and advertising on a social media platform. One, there's always constant changes to the algorithm. You know, if you use like Instagram or TikTok, you can notice sometimes how your for you page seems to be acting differently than it did like three months ago. So that's because there's always changes to the algorithm. And I'm sure one day, although I don't know what day that will be, there will probably be a new trending app besides TikTok that overtakes TikTok. So again, that's another um, change to the industry that's going to be really impactful. I personally see this last point as both a reward and a challenge. It kind of ties into the previous point about staying up to date on digital trends. This sort of just depends on your personality. Are you someone who likes you know, trying out new things all the time? Are you someone who likes to be able to adapt to change because this industry has a lot of change? Um, another issue that tech companies are increasingly facing now and probably will face more in coming years is how do tech companies balance user privacy when it comes to data and advertising? You know, what is the right balance? So this is actually one of like the biggest changes happening industry now so it's affecting how twitter does advertising how facebook does advertising etc um, but these are just some of the questions that are being asked right now so people will need to really be able to come up with creative and innovative solutions in the future uh, so again could be a pro or con depending on your personality and what you want out of a career but i personally think it's really rewarding and keeps the work interesting so with that that is the end of my presentation. Um, I wanna open up the floor to answer any questions you guys might have about Twitter, marketing, tech, or just post-grad, what you should do now in high school. Um, so I don't know, Angela, if I should just, how the process will go for like Q and A, but. Sure, um, I'll go ahead and yeah. open up the chat for everyone. So you can actually go in and uh, type your questions. Or I'm, you know, if it's a long question, then I'll um, ask you to unmute yourself. But yeah, feel free to um, start putting some questions in the chat. So yes, we are saving all the presentations, and um, you can see all the recordings. So it, it'll be on the um, website that you registered, is where you can see all of the videos of the PYP speakers. Um, here's one for you, Catherine. Um, what kind of clubs were you a part of in college and high school? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I guess I'll start off with college first because it actually kind of relates to the industry I joined. Um, but in college, one of my main uh, student groups I was in was a student business organization. It was called ISBE. Um, but basically, it was, it was a really large student group on campus that had different parts to it. I was part of the group focused on marketing because I was interested in marketing. So in this student group, um, we helped out local businesses around our college campus with their marketing strategy. So it could be like, uh, I think it was like a restaurant or even a student startup. We would take them on as clients and then talk to them about their marketing strategy and what their goals were. How could they increase the you know, company's awareness on the Northwestern student campus? So that was a really neat opportunity, um, sort of like a mini agency, um, being able to do that in college. So I think that was my primary student group that I was involved in. Um, in high school, I didn't really do anything in advertising. In high school, I was actually um, a part of the Latin club at Woodbridge. I don't know if anyone, I don't know if it still exists. Um, it's called Junior Costco League. So I took Latin for four years. So that was my main uh, extracurricular. I think though in high school for Latin club, I think I did do some like marketing or promotion, like PR activities where I could. So that was able to, that was able to help me build up experience in that way. Um, and then my other main extracurricular in high school was music related. Uh, I played the traditional Korean drums. Um, again, very random, but it was a musical extracurricular I did. Uh, so not related to marketing, but that's what I did in high school. That's awesome. 
Uh, we have another one. Do you have any recommendations for what we should do in the summers during while they're still in high school for if they yeah. want to end up in the field that you're in? Yeah, that's a really great question. I think in high school, um, I don't really think internships are maybe as common in high school as in college. So I will say um, if there's any way you can sort of one, like practice marketing on your own. So whether that's one, getting good at like Photoshop um, or like Adobe software software tools, that's probably really great. Just any way in which you could practice using those skills earlier is also really awesome. If you know anyone at all who like needs help with marketing or like running social media, um, that's another great way to tap into building up those skills. Um, and then this one might be kind of silly, but I think it still makes sense. Like I know TikTok is huge. And honestly, if you're able to like, I don't want to say go viral on TikTok, but like be able to learn and understand like how TikTok works and like know that you have an understanding of how social media acts and how things can go viral and understand what's trending. I think that's the biggest thing that, you know, Gen Z, you guys will contribute to the marketing industry when you enter the workforce. So, you know, use TikTok for fun, but also like study it kind of. Um, I feel like that's actually like super applicable. Yeah, absolutely. And just adding in there, um, they could possibly take like a marketing class or a business class oh, or something. Yes, like totally. or, <laughs> you know, um, so we do have some students that take summer school classes over there for yeah, classes, that's awesome you know? if you can do that in high school. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a great opportunity. Um, let's see here. So what are some challenges that you faced in finding a job leading up to working uh, with Twitter? Yeah, I will say typically jobs in marketing um, and advertising. So compared to my friends who were like engine, who studied engineering or consulting or finance, typically recruitment for those jobs happen pretty early on. So maybe by fall semester of senior year, they know if they have a job at that company early on, whereas jobs in marketing and advertising, um, you you sort of like apply and you start immediately in that sense. So I didn't know that I got, like I didn't get the job at BuzzFeed until like when, like right when I graduated, I didn't know that I had it like months before graduation. So that is something different. You'll probably notice compared to your peers in other industries. So that is a challenge in that way, like sort of uh, like lack of job security, just right, like as you're applying to things. So that's one of the biggest challenges. Um, and the other challenge I would say is, especially if you want to work at large companies like Twitter or even, you know, at BuzzFeed or Universal Pictures, the previous places I interned at, really do some networking. That's the biggest, like, you know, there are a ton of applicants to these jobs, especially at large tech companies. If you can do networking and by networking, what I mean by that is if you know anyone from, you know, anyone like a relative or a family friend or like want to go to college, college alumni who work at companies like Twitter, like TikTok or Facebook, um, reach out to them, send them an email and say, hey, you know, I am very much interested in working at this company in this type of role. You work at this company in that type of role. Like, could you, do you have 15 minutes for a phone call to talk to me about your day to day, what I should do to be prepping to apply to jobs like this in the future? Um, networking is the biggest thing you can do to be able to sort of put your name um, through all the different applicants at large companies. So definitely keep that in mind when you start applying to jobs. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we have a question in regards to, and it's a good point, your working environment. So, you know, in different careers, you know, you can work, you know, indoors, outdoors, travel, you know, are you sitting most of the time? How would you describe your work environment for your field? Yeah, um, definitely I'm sitting most of the time. <laughs> it's right now, especially um, during like work from home. Yeah. Um, but this like currently right now at Twitter, we have like a flexible work from home program. So you, I can go into the office if I want to, but I also am not required to. So I think especially right now during times of COVID, that's great. Um, right now, I prefer like working from home, maybe like three days a week. Um, actually, right now I do every day because of like Omicron. But before that, I like went to the office at least once or twice a week. And it's really nice because the off, like tech companies usually have like free food, free coffee um, in the office. So those are all special perks you could experience. Um, 
There is also opportunity for travel, sort of depends on the company you're at. In my current role, I don't do as much traveling. The sales teams would do that since they are in charge of like the client relationship. But oftentimes you can do lots of traveling to the company's other parts of the company's office um, or where your client works at. So it depends on the company, but travel is definitely something that could happen. Um, yeah, I mostly do sit though <laughs> in regards to the sitting standing question. Um, it's also mostly like an indoor job, um, but it's nice with work from home. You know, I could go to a coffee shop to work, which is nice. So pretty flexible. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions that you guys want to add into the chat room here? While we're waiting, um, I'm going to put in the link um, for check out, and that's how you'll be considered for a raffle prize. But if you have any other questions, just please, this is your time to go ahead and uh, put that in the chat there, or I can unmute you if you wanna talk directly to Catherine. Uh, we have one that says, what challenges have you had when working for Twitter? Did we answer that one or is that a separate one? I think that's a, just a new one. Oh, okay. Let's see here. I think, yeah, you did have that question before. Especially separate from applying for jobs. I guess just, can you talk about like your um, time, like applying for jobs and kind of the challenges that you found? Yeah. Um, so, Going back to my earlier point of like trying to be able to network to be able to make your application known when applying to large companies. Another challenge of that I would say is dedicating time to finding um, people you want to reach out to like it is something that will take a large chunk of your time like say senior year of college. Um, so it is something that's like not just like, oh, let me just spend five minutes doing like you want to be mindful of who you're reaching out to, because you have to also recognize that each person you talk to on the phone like you wanna make a good impression to them. Like you wanna make sure you have questions prepared because say you have a negative phone call with them, like they're not gonna to want to refer you to a job at that company if they didn't have a good experience talking to you. So that is also something challenging in the sense like you have to put time dedicated towards it. Um, what, what else was challenging for me? Um, I guess the other point of like how other industries, you'll know if you have a job faster than the marketing and advertising industry, but that's just sort of, expected in this field. Um, any other challenges that I had applying? I guess always make sure like writing cover letters that also takes a lot of time. Um, so I always try to have my friends review my resume and cover letter. Um, but also what I did do a lot of was at whatever college you go to, there will probably be like a college um, career counselor. I went all the time. I went like freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, and senior year um, because I really wanted like a professional college counselor to look over my resume and look over my cover letter to get their insights on it, what edits I should make, and how I should tailor each resume and cover letter to the specific job I'm applying for. That's also something to keep in mind. I think it's a mistake a lot of people make when you just sort of have like a general cover letter and resume. Companies can see that you didn't really make an effort to tailor it to that role you're applying. Sometimes people accidentally name the wrong company in the cover letter, uh, which is really bad. So don't worry, I've done that once before. I did not get the job, it's okay. Um, but yeah, that's another challenge is just knowing that job recruitment takes a lot of time and it's not something to just sort of do mindlessly. That's a great answer, no, thank you. And, you know, you guys have access to, you know, the college career centers at all your high schools. so. Um, that's what we're here for, to help you. So great. Well, I think that wraps it up. Um, we really appreciate your time. That was very interesting to get, kind of get into the world of Twitter. <laughs> um, so we appreciate your time. And like I said, uh, for students that are in the Zoom still, you can go ahead and uh, complete the exit survey that I just put in the chat. 
And then that will um, complete our time. But thank you so much, Catherine. That was great. Yeah, of course. Thank you guys all for listening. Um, I'm sure you can reach out to Angela if you have any other questions for me, but happy to answer anything you guys would have. Awesome. Thank you so much.